Hi you guys, this is Tanya Gibbs and today I want to share with you a live card tutorial. This is in real time. I am not speeding up the video and this is uh, per a request from Anna, Asian Tiger 513. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and Miss Anna, I hope you enjoy. So I want to start out by using the On Trend Paper Collection by My Mind's Eye and this was designed by Jen Allison. It's super gorgeous paper and it has a lot of my favorite colors, the mints and the corals, it's so beautiful. Some items that I had die cut previously and they didn't work out for the project that I had planned. So we're going to uh, take those into consideration and then what if you'll remember when I was using this paper collection I had created a layout so I had made several of these kind of photo mat style cuts that I never used so I want to try and use my scraps as much as possible what I have here is um, an A2 card that is top folding and that is 11 inches that is scored at five and a half and then folded over and then it's also cut at four and a quarter so that's going to be the base of my card, but I'm going to put it to the side because I typically get messy whenever I create my cards. So I've decided that I, what I try to do is create another panel that will go on top. And then this way, if I use wet mediums, I'm not going to ruin my card surface. So I'll have that set to the side. And then um, I've also gone ahead and cut out a piece to go on the inside of the card so I can write my sentiment. Uh, let me grab out my Prima Distress Tool and let's go ahead and get this sized up for the right size of the card. So I think I want to go here and have this a full size. I like the boldness of this pattern. So um, let me go ahead and decide. Let's see here. I think I want to just distress this really good. I never really care for uh, solid or you know smooth edges I really like it when things are kind of tattered up a little bit it makes it a little more interesting so I'm going to do that and before I glue it down I want to go about right there with it I'm going to go ahead and trim the back of this off So it doesn't matter if it's a straight cut or not because I'm going to take this Prima tool and just rough up that edge really well. I think that might be why I like to distress all of my edges so much is because uh, it doesn't matter if it's straight because you can't tell anyway. You've roughed it up, right? So I really like the placement of that. So I've got my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive over here to the side and I'm only going to place a little bit of glue here in the center because I want to be able to tuck around if I need to. So I'm going to place that right there. Uh, we have another sheet here that is roughly about the same size. Let's go ahead and cut part of that off. And I think I also want to just kind of rip this right down the edge. Like I said, I like things to not be completely neat. Now I'm not going to worry about scuffing up this edge because I think what I want to do is tuck this in so it's like that. I really like that. So let's put a little bit of glue there. I think too when you're doing these types of cards don't overthink it just work with the supplies you have um, my supplies typically work out great for cards because like I said I'm using six by six pads and they're the perfect size for a card but I'm also um, use typically using those on uh, layouts and things like that so everything has about roughly the same shape uh, you know it's usually squared off which makes it pretty easy too but I recommend just kind of you know go with whatever don't don't sit and fuss with it too much you know set yourself up a little uh, you know kind of challenge if you will of let's get this done in less than 30 minutes so you're not overthinking it you're just putting paper down 
and the object is to use as many scraps as you possibly can. Cards are reserved for me for older product or scraps. And when I say older product, I mean product that, like in the case of this, where it may be new and trendy and it might be the hottest new paper line out, but I've already used it once and I also um, are, I'm using the scraps from the previous project. I also find that it's a lot easier to create these cards if you are using the scraps immediately after you create the project. So I have this doily and I love that it pulls some of those uh, greens that are in the background of this paper and it has this gold foiling. But if you'll notice with the way the doily was cut, this side of the doily doesn't really have much gold on it. So I want to be aware of that as I'm trying to find placement and gluing it down because I want to maximize that beautiful foiling and be able to see it. So I'm going to just put some glue here. And notice that I'm not going all the way to the edge because at this point I'm not really sure what I want to do. And I may want to um, tuck in some more elements. So I'm going to place that right there just like that. And it's starting to take shape and this is starting to become my focal point. So I also have gone through my little stash of one hit wonders over at the side and I pulled out this piece of rickrack. Uh, um, it was used on a tag or something and I typically keep the smallest of scraps when it comes to ribbons and the reason is because when you cut them or you know you can use them for filler in your flower arrangements and things like that so uh, I typically keep all of the little scraps together and I think what I want to do is just sort of build out like use it for like an, a design element. So I'm going to take my tiny attacher and I'm going to staple that right in the center. Maybe give it a couple of little staples so it stays together. And since it's a zigzag and it kind of mimics a chevron pattern too, I think uh, before I glue that down, I did pull out a couple of flowers as well. I have this guy right here and I think he's going to go beautifully right there in the center. I just am not sure if I want to keep him that color or if I want to color him with something else. I've also pulled out these gemstones. These are from the paper studio and I really think that they will look super cute in the center of my flower. So let's go ahead and add one there. Now I may need to reinforce that with a little bit more glue. So I'm going to add that to the center of my flower glue on this ribbon because I really am not sure if that Scotch quick dry glue will hold. I have my little mat here. This is the Lindy Stamp Gang in the Cockabell's Coral and I love this color. I'm shaking it off camera so you don't get dizzy but it has a really cool like blue and corals and golds. So I'm going to spritz that really well there in the center of my flower, but I'm also going to spritz it with a little bit of water and that's going to help that pigment to sort of um, wick out into the flower. Now I'm going to allow that to dry uh, for just a few minutes. So now that my uh, flower is somewhat dry, it's not completely dry yet, but it's dry enough to be able to work with it without it falling apart. I'm going to go ahead and glue it down in the center of my chevron spray here. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply these little flowers that I have off to the side. I'm going to put one right there and then one right here. So cute. Loving it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get these gems to go in the center of those flowers. They're a little oversized, but I think it's okay makes it interesting or it would be too perfect. Okay, so I really like that. Isn't that cute? Cute, cute. 
so now let's work on uh, maybe adding a little bit more splatters. So again, I'm going to just um, wait. Let me pull my mat back out so my surface stays clean. It's another great thing about this is you can. And let's add some splatters off over here. And then let's purposely add a couple in here. And then here's a little trick. If you have some that's puddled up like this, you can hit it with your finger and it splats out. So it gives a really nice, interesting look. And I love this spray because it has a really nice, um, it has a really nice gold shimmer. So let's do the same thing here and splat those out just a little bit. Now, so I've gone through my stash of alpha letters and I have found these two letters that say hi. And of course the colors don't match. They're chipboard letters and they just, they don't match. They're purple and pink. But because it's the H and the I, I can flip them over and the other side is white. So I thought about, since there's so much gold going on here, let's add some gold to those. So what I'm going to do is I have my Versa ink pad here. And yes, it has been through it several um, years. I have owned this luscious goodness. And just going to make sure it's inked up really well. It's looking pretty rough. I know I probably need to invest in a new one, but... Uh, you know, it still works. So why not hang on to it? Now I may need to um, ink this up a couple of times. So I'm going to keep that handy. And I'm going to go ahead and this is my little blotter paper. And this is uh, the gold embossing powder from Ranger. I use this a lot. It's called the Queen's Gold. I don't believe that you can still buy this color. I think they've changed it to uh, Princess Gold. But it's still, just any gold embossing powder will work. So I'm going to take my tweezers and just kind of pick these up and bump them off. And like I said, I may need to do this a couple of times. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to bump that off and then carefully place this back into the jar so I can reuse it at a later date. Um, I'm notorious for making a huge giant mess with embossing powder so I try to put it away right away. Put the lid back on it because when you hit, hit it with the heat gun you don't want to scatter all of that powder all over the place. So let's go ahead and heat it. Let's pull out my card again. And this time, I think I could probably put these down with a little of this uh, scotch glue. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that. This dries super fast. So I'm just going to pull it up maybe about right there. Same thing here. Great way to use up those scrap chipboard letters too because even if they don't really match, you can make them match by just adding a little embossing powder to them. So I love that. Look at how cute that is. I mean, I know the glare is probably bad, but um, you'll see it in the pictures. And now I want to write hi, friend. So I'm just going to use my uh, Uniball Signo Micro, Micro 207 pen. And I'm going to write friend. And I think I kind of want it a little wonky. Like, you know, um, a little fun. And then let's put just a little bitty explanation point. Super cute. So it's now time to start assembling my card. Uh, and I have my little blank here. So let's move all of this out of the way. And I have my panel. And I think I'm just going to just uh, take my quick dry glue and just add that directly there. And try and center it up as best you can on the panel but now we have a nice neat inside to our card so let's see if this matches 
Oh, look at that. It really does. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use this because I like that it has the foil and it has, um, make sure I got it going in the right direction. Um, I like that it has the foil and it also has all the other colors that are found on the front of the card. So that makes it nice and neat. And then to have a panel for my sentiment and to be able to write a quick little note to my new friend, I will place this here on the inside. And there you go. Now we have our card. So here are some close-ups of the card. On the side view, you can really see the dimension here, and I absolutely love this color palette. It is so fun and uh, a great way to use up those scraps in your 6x6 six six paper pads. And here is the front view of the card. Thank you so much, Anna. And again, her channel is Asian Tiger 513 I'll put a link to it down below for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for leaving that comment because I was able to connect with you and get to know you a little bit better and that was a lot of fun for me so as always hashtag following Tanya Gibbs if you decide to uh, try out some of the things that I have taught you here on my channel and don't forget to leave me a thumbs up a comment and share it with a friend